y'all, Sarah Luhu here, and we are back again with Steins Gate. So last time we visited a maid cafe with Daru and uh, met what I believe is our final main character, Ferris, who is a sort of maid expert of sorts. She is a professional of the maid cafe business. She is excellent at what she does and Daru is completely infatuated with her. And she seems completely infatuated with Ogren's fantasy world that he creates and wants to kind of match wits with him on that. Um, other than that, uh, we got a bit more information about Moika. That, and that information really is that she uh, communicates extra cutesy in text message. Like, you remember how weird and awkward shy she was before? Yeah, she is super cutesy in text messages, so that's something. And uh, let's see, what else we got? Um, we went a bit more on with the John Titor stuff. We went on the forums with him. And uh, yeah, he seems to recognize that we recognize him from another world line, but nobody believes anything that um, Okarin and him are saying. So, you know, it, it's understandable because, I mean, it's just people on the air and I talk about time travel and trying to convince other people that they travel through time and all that. So it makes sense that they wouldn't believe him. But uh, yeah, that's just what happened last time. Anywho, we want to go and experiment with our phone wave thing, which I'm pretty certain is the actual key to time travel for us. So it's high time we figure out what's going on with that thing. Earlier, I asked Daru to connect the phone wave name subject to change to the computer. He finished setting it up yesterday, and now he's about to do a quick, oh, do the quick wire work in the development room. Hey, Daru, what's up with the X68000? I mean, it's a 20-year-old machine with specs lower than my cell phone. Well, I mean, you know, if things upgrade, you know, they get smaller, typically. It's cool, duh. So, it's like the reason why some protagonists are odd-eyed, even though they're Japanese. Okay, what are you talking about here, Grim? Odd-eyed. Heterochrom- oh, heterochromia? A condition where the eyes are different colors. A trait often used, found in anime and manga characters. There usually isn't a reason for the character to be odd-eyed. It's just for a uh, moe factor or the coolness factor. <laughs> Wonderful, poor them. Even though they're Japanese, are Japanese people not supposed to have heterochromia? Ah, uh, not good, you bro. It's good. It's whatever. You don't normally get me. If it's cool, then it's cool. Anyway, there wasn't much of an option. This was j the PC we were u we weren't using. Wait, what about your new one? No way. We don't know what could happen when it's connected to your crazy machine. It could kill the performance. Yeah, don't want to short out his new computer, dude. Selfish bastard. Nope, smart bastard. <laughs> Besides, we made the phone wave, named subject to change together. It's our crazy machine. Why won't you recognize the Daru, huh? Anyway, did you did you eh, did you do any research on the gelification? Yeah, at the university this morning. I don't remember this. Why would a banana gelify? What's what kind of science are we dealing with here? I examined the sample under a microscope and found it was shredded at the molecular level. Shredded? It's not a mere phase transi eh, transition. The banana became something entirely different. Um, could it have rotted? it? Nah, there's no way. Two mints in the mark wave couldn't do that. Then I remembered about fractal structures. The Menger sponge thing? Yeah, it looked like someone something drilled holes into the banana. An infinite number of holes in a fractal pattern, right down to the nano level. Whoa, what could do something like that? I have one hypothesis. Adding a dramatic pause to build attention, Daru gulps, waiting for me to continue. It's the result of the micro oh, it's the result of the microwave's electromagnetic waves. What does that mean? If my guess is correct, then our phone wave named Subject to Change has the potential to become a weapon of unprecedented destructive power. One that could change the face of war as we know it. <laughs> oh, Okarin, why can't you see what's right in front of you? I twist my lips into a maniacal grin. 
I don't really understand too much about what's going on with the microwave and the bananas. Because originally I thought that it was, like, maybe it could be, you know, reversing the time on the banana, but I don't understand where the gelatin part of that would come into play there. But they're talking about shredding it on a molecular level, and I think I kind of understand this one. It's like a kind of ricochet effect thing. Like, I've seen this in other sci-fi related genres before, and I can't remember what it was, but I do know what they're talking about here. Anyway, anyway, I twist my lips into a maniacal grin. Then I- oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Ain't that on silent. Then I whip out my phone and put it to my ear. Perfect timing, actually. It's me. We're proceeding to stage two of the plan. Soon they will learn. The judgment day is near. Oh, Grant, stop talking to yourself. All shall be as Titan's gate wills. Resistance is futile, El Sai Kung Ru. Uh, quit talking to your imaginary friend. I'm done with the wiring. I want to explain that he's not imaginary, but revealing the identity of my contact would be a betrayal. Ah, uh, the last thing I need is another enemy, especially one whose power and cunning rivals that of the organization. They are truly a powerful being. The phone wave name subject change is now an indecipherable mess of wires. No, don't mess it up! All we did was hook it up to a computer, yet it turned out like something MacDyver would put together. Do you mean MacGyver? Now we can access the microwave's terminal mode and see exactly what's going on in its computer brain. Well, what's next? We have bananas. And we stick said bananas in microwaves. Just before I left May Queen Yan, Mayuri asked me to buy some bananas. With her money. And so, she's too nice for her own good. Or maybe she didn't even consider what would happen. Poor Mayuri, all she wanted was some bananas, and we're going to ruin all of them. <laughs> By now you'd think she'd know that if I buy bananas, I'm going to experiment on them. Oh, poor Mayuri. Such a waste of money. Oh, hey, that was my thing. That was my thingy thing. Yay, we've got mail. Up, oh, it's a reply from Ferris. We did send her a message before. So, that was it after all, yeah? The holders of original sin, also known as the Prophetia. Among them is a girl known as the Fallen Angel who accepted Chaosnia. I touched a picture of her face, so remember it well, yeah? Oh, and before I forget, ha, forget, looking at the picture without protection will cause Divine Eye. Oh, to, will cause Divine Eye to activate the original sin. Excitation mode 666 compulsory, uh, compulsory receptor release, which will annihilate you at the subatomic level. So be careful, yeah. I want to see the attachment. 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 Oh dear. <laughs> Is this her character? Oh, darling, darling, darling. I can't reply to this one, can I? Oh wow, that was fun. No, no, I'm cool without it. I would like to reply to it, but whatever. Anywho, so I put the entire bunch of bananas into the phone wave name subject to change. Let's get this out of the phone. You know, Mayushi's going to cry if you use them all, right? Wasn't it her money? It was, and we are a terrible person. She donated that money to our research efforts. She did not volunteer it, man. You don't have to use the whole thing. One is enough. One. <laughs> Can we only do one? Dora retrieves the bananas, peels one from the bunch, and sticks it back inside the phone wave. Name subject to change. Daru, you are truly the best of us. We'll never reshape the fabric of society as long as money dictates the limits of our science. But unfortunately, they must for us to survive. You're the only one who wants to reshape society, Ogrin. He lost all enthusiasm the second we got back to the lab. What a fickle man. He doesn't have Ferris there to impress him. Or to impress her. Hey, come on, start the timer already. Right, now, where did I put my phone? Phone, phone. Oh, right, where did I put my phone? I have to get it out, my bad. Okay, I got the phone. I'm going to call you, right? There, oh, phone wave, right, sorry. Your phone's just attached to the phone wave. Wait, it's only. Call complete. Instant access. 
Hello, this is the phone wave. Name subject to change. All oh, right, it's supposed to be Rayori's voice, isn't it? Uh, let's change that up then. Hello, this is the phone wave. Name subject to change. The Mayushi guidance system. You can operate the timer from this menu. After pushing the hashtag button or pound button, please enter the heating time in seconds. In hindsight, we should have made the Mayushi guidance skippable. Having to wait each time is quite annoying. That was your choice, though. For example, press pound sign 60 for one minute. For two minutes, press pound sign 120. It's finally over. Okay, entering 120 pound. The turntable inside the phone wave, name subject to change, begins to spin backwards. Two minutes sure is long. It doesn't actually have to be two minutes. Mayuri had the timer set to two minutes when she first discovered the freezing function, or whatever it is. So we're just reproducing that. Naturally, we have experimented with 60 seconds and 180 seconds too. If we set it shorter, the freezing only goes halfway, if at all. Conversely, setting it longer increases the effect. You know, if the microwave's emissions are doing it, then shouldn't our cells be getting jellified too? While still looking bored, Daru finally gets into the discussion at hand. Oh yeah, because it would be like emitting all around you guys. You're too close! Need some kind of proximity. Maybe the microwave itself is acting as a shield against whatever is inside of it. Uh, well, you have- well, have you ever nuked yourself inside the phone wave? Name subject to change? I can't even fit in there. Anyway, what's your source on the electromagnetic waves? If you must know, it's my mad scientist intuition. Oh, so not facts. Nope, just his crazy brain. <laughs> Edison once said, without 1% inspiration, 99% of perspiration is wasted. So, inventors of the world, be inspired, end quote. Wasn't it genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration? That sounds more correct, Daru. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint, but in recent years it's become common knowledge, but that is a misquote. Mwahahaha! <laughs> Edison said that. Be inspired. Yes, be inspired, he said. I don't know if that was exactly what he said, but I'm sure it was something along those lines. At least, that's what the wiki said, and always trust the wiki. Therefore, as a genius mad scientist, I am always in sp- The phone wave name subject to change rings. This is just going to jellify the bananas like usual, isn't it? We need a new experiment. Stick a hamster in there. Don't do that. That sounds terrible. I regret that immediately. <laughs> it feels like I wasted 120 seconds on nothing. Maybe they turned out different this time. Drew opens the phone wave name subject to change. Yeah, changed his door and peeks inside. What? What? He rubs his eyes, blinks several times, and then resumes staring at, into the microwave. What are you doing? Did having only one in there change it? Well, uh, it's, um, gone. Gone? What's gone? The banana! What was he talking about? I pushed Doro aside and look into the phone wave, named subject to change. Did we send it to another timeline? It's gone. There's nothing inside. Banana has vanished without a trace. After a short pause to collect myself, I whip out my phone and speak into the silence. It's me. Slight problem. We may have awakened something terrible. <laughs> God damn it, Okarin. This is not the time. What, what do you mean, something terrible? I ignored Dara's panic cry. <laughs> I'm surprised too. My heart's pounding, but I try to appear calm. I'm invoking emergency order 666. Activate the cold heart protocol. <laughs> what do you mean we need congressional approval? There's no time, you fool! Tokyo will be blasted to atoms! Oh, Okarin. I put my phone away after yelling. You, you should be an actor. He would be great at it. He truly believes everything he says. Sh shut up, you fair stalker. Where'd you hide the banana? Who's a stalker? I mean, we do have her as our wallpaper man. <laughs> the banana, where is it? Are you planning on beco uh, to become a street magician or something? You're the one who hid it, aren't you? 
Dude, we both stand right next to each other. How would we have done it? <sighs> uh, uncomfortable silence. I realize my throat is dry. Where the hell did it go? How should I know? Well, we need to figure it out somehow. Where did you go, banana? BANANA! <laughs> I take the turntable out of the microwave, scour every nook and cranny, but find neither peel nor stem of the banana. Whoa, wait. I think I get it now. It's not an electromagnetic weapon. It's a teleportation device. Whoa, what? <laughs> wait, that's absurd. Where would it even end up? Um, how else could it have vanished? The microwave was closed. Um, maybe we should just calm down. Uh, yeah, you're right. We each take a deep breath. Oh, I know. I'll eat one of the remaining bananas. That will calm me down. <laughs> That's one way to do it. I reach for the bunch of bananas, but what if they're, like, weird bananas? A uh, what? W what the? <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. Not three minutes ago, Doro plucked the banana from the bunch and put it inside the phone wave named Subject to Change. But now, there's no sign that the banana was ever plucked. Instead, a single jellified banana has appeared among the regular bananas. Completely attached. Oh shit, what the hell's going on? It reformed to it. Dara notices it too. I'm trying to figure out how this factors into the time travel. I suppose that sent it back to where it was originally at? Is that the idea there but it's still getting all weird and jelly like that didn't happen to us when we skipped to another timeline so why is it affecting the banana like this he reaches out to touch it but I quickly stop him wait how many bananas are in the lab right now uh, j just these I think is this gel banana is this gel banana my bad I didn't even notice that before. Attached to the same stem as the banana you just plucked. I don't know, man. I wasn't paying attention. It doesn't look like it was ever plucked. No cuts or anything. Aside from the gelification, it looks completely normal. Uh, hey, Daru. Could this possibly be? Time travel? Time travel? The word I spoke impulsively a few seconds ago. I hesitate to speak it again, teleportation, but I must, because no matter how unbelievable it may be, we saw it with our own eyes. My head's full of question marks. I don't know how this happened, but if I were to explain it as I saw it, the banana that was inside the phone wave name subject to change returned instantly to its bunch. In other words, teleportation, a teleporter. We've invented a teleporter. Oh. Oh wait, that wasn't... That wasn't Daru. That was... I hear a girl's voice coming from the lounge. That looks like an interesting experiment. Uh, who's there? My heart just skipped a beat. Who's infiltrating our lab? I turn towards the voice in surprise. Makisa? <laughs> How did you get in here? And get pierced by a sharp stare. Impossible! What are you doing here? Who let you in? The 18-year-old girl genius, the sadist who humiliates men in public, also known as the zombie. <laughs> Don't insult people like that, Makise Karisu. Uh, nice exposition, bro. <laughs> who are you calling a zombie? Uh, what is the meaning of this? What is your purpose here? Yeah, seriously, Makise, you don't just go breaking into people's apartments like this. It's kind of rude. I'm here to see you, Okabe Rintaru-san. Or is it Hoi and Kiyoma? Oh, winking at us. Uh, hello? <laughs> Wait, how the hell does she know my real name? I've never spoken it in front of her. How did you find this out? I was right. You're one of the organization's top agents. An Esper with superhuman powers. Is everyone you meet an Esper, Rintaru? Ah, no wonder you rose from the dead. Oh, right. She is a zombie. I forgot about that. I'm not dead, alright. Stop killing me off. Hashida-san, can you do something about this guy? Ah, you came out at a bad time, Makise-shi. Uh, with Okran freaking out like this. Daru Kans doesn't seem phased at all by this girl's interest. Why? Daru, did, did you invite her over, man? 
I mean, come on, you gotta talk to me about these things. Have you betrayed me, Doru? <laughs> Clearly. Calm down, man. Are you being blackmailed? Or did she seduce you? Tell me! Tell me, Doru, where did she touch you? I glare at Karisu. How dare you defile my right-hand man? He's my right-hand uh, right hand man! How dare you! You've crossed the line, bitch! <laughs> Whoa! Reel it in there, Okarin. Get a hold of yourself! Karisu's eyes flash dangerously. I think. <laughs> Such intensity from an 18-year-old. Maybe she didn't resurrect after her first death. Maybe she's a robotic killing machine constructed to replace the dead Karisu. Is that it? It would actually be very fitting with, you know, time travel and all that, sending a machine back to kill you, Okarin. <laughs> For now, I'll do as I'm told. <laughs> Tame that easily. Hashida-san gave me the address after yesterday's lecture. He also told me a name. That's all? The truth is kind of a letdown. <laughs> So, you're here to see me, is that it? And Daru did, in fact, betray our secrets. Ah, uh, yes. You claim to have seen me die. I came to see if that was the truth, or just a pathetic excuse to grope me. I came for the answer. Now that she mention it, mentions it, she did treat me like I was a perv yesterday. Well, you were all up on her business, man. <laughs> well, I suppose I should be grateful that she didn't call the cops on me after what I did. Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> But what choice did I have? Anybody would react the same way if a dead person reappeared before them, right? I, I don't think so, Ogren. I don't think groping them would be the first <laughs> instinct there, man. You were kind of lifting up her shirt and everything. But your current behavior is all the answer I need. It was all an act to grope me. My initial hypothesis was correct. Not so fast. There's more to this than you know. Look at my gel banana. I must clear my name, or I'll be labeled as a perv forever. I mean, you might anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's put this aside for now. Really? And why? That's a relief. I was sure she was going to call the police. But that for now part bothers me, as does I. <laughs> Grisu enters the development room with a quick and confident stride. Even though she's only 18, she's got a decent figure and good posture. This is not the time to be checking out women, Ogren. Not much in the chest, though. I mean, she got a figure, man. Her presence seems to fill the cramped room, driving me and Doru to the corners. Can't she tell this area's off limits? I haven't properly introduced myself yet, have I? I'm Akisa Karisu. Pleased to meet you. She holds out her hand. What is she trying to do? Shoot lightning from her fingertips? Yes, she is definitely trying to burn you alive and curse you for all eternity. <laughs> you can't even shake hands. Are all Japanese men this difficult? Shake hands. Trying to process that thought. It does not quite compute. Shake hands? Does she mean for me to wave at her? This girl genius is asking me for a handshake? We only met yesterday. And just moments ago, she was on the verge of calling the cops. You, you're not Japanese? I've lived in America for seven years. What about it? Can't you tell by my accent? <laughs> America? I look down at her slender figure, fingers, but <laughs> glossy, healthy fingernails. No unnecessary nail polish. I stare, fixated. Slowly, I extend my hand, making sure to keep enough weight on my heels so I can flee at a moment's notice. Oh, Okarani, you're kind of pathetic, man. I love you for it. I lightly grab the tip of Carice's index finger between my thumb and index finger, and then instantly let go. <laughs> he actually doesn't comprehend a handshake! Oh my goodness. What's your problem? I can feel your aura of malice. You must be a powerful kung fu master. Don't be ridiculous. Then, you're a ninja! Give it a rest. Damn, she is completely cold. She has still got time for your shit, man. Her tone gets scary sometimes, too. If you grew up in America, shouldn't you say, Ha ha ha, nice to meet you, with a smile across your whole face when asking for a handshake? No, wait, you should be asking for a hug, right? We are huggers. <laughs> Perhaps that's too much to expect from a killing machine. 
Ah, uh, what kind of stereotype is that? Carisu sighs. She's not even looking at me. Instead, she's staring at the bananas next to the food wave. Names have to change. Do they interest you? The bananas, which have exhibited a most unusual phenomenon. Out of the bunch, one has been completely jellified. Does this strike your fancy? Fascinating. Carisu brings her face closer to it to get a good look. Have you any forceps? Uh, no. Oh. Then... So much for the lab, right? And then, Carisu stubs the gelatinous banana with her index finger. Smart! <laughs> she parries her beautiful fingertip knuckle deep into the slimy banana. What are you doing? That's precious data! It's squishy. <laughs> Carisu tracks her finger. Pieces of gel cling to her fingertip. She pulls that fingertip... No, she puts that fingertip into her mouth without any hesitation. No taste. Gross. She says it with a straight face. Krisu! I, I expected this from Mayuri, but... <laughs> oh, goodness. Scientists. In all, in all reality, like, people want to believe that, you know, scientists are these great logical minds. But in all honesty, a lot of them are kind of daredevils, if you think about it. Like, you know, look back at old scientists like, you know, Darwin and all of that crap. And it's just like, we're going to go to random places, touch random things, and eat random things, and see what doesn't kill us. Yeah, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and all that. But that is basically what scientists are in my mind. <laughs> she says it with a straight face. Hey, but it gives us the information we need, right? You have quite the appetite, I see. A side effect of the resurrection, perhaps. If you're that hungry, I guess I could give you a banana or two. No thanks. Either way, those bananas are my Yushis, and everybody's ruining them. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. This is an offering. Take it. As if who would eat some Purr's banana? <laughs> a Purr's banana? Dory starts shaking, as if he's been electrocuted. What? What? What's wrong? It, it, eat a Purr's banana. Squishy finger and mouth. Gross with a soccer expression. Oh, Daru. Daru, Daru, Daru. Looks like his cranial perforate processor is overclocking. No nosebleed yet, though. Um, can you say that one more time? With a more humiliated expression, if you please. Huh? <laughs> Come on. Say, who would eat some Purr's banana? But if you could add on a, ah, oh, but it's so, after that, it, it would be extra delicious. <laughs> ha. Ha. <laughs> ah. Suddenly, Kreese's face turns bright red. Don't be embarrassed. Yell at him or something. Ha <laughs> ha Oh, Daru. You may be a worthless, disgusting perv, but let me say, well done, sir. You've left the genius girl at a loss for words. Payback is sweet. Now to follow up her maximum combo. Let's show that conceited little girl how true adults fight. This is getting kind of dark, <laughs> Okarin. So, Makise Karisu, you just imagined something, didn't you? And by all means, tell us, don't be shy. Ha ha ha. Even why you. Come on, say it, genius girl. What's the imagination of a genius like? I'd love to hear from you. You ass! <laughs> Grisa turns her back to us with uh, perked shoulders. Looks like she's capable of expressing human emotion after all. That rolls out robotic killing machine. Or does it? Uh, I feel refreshed. I haven't felt this good in years. Way to go, Daru. That's my right hand man. Always gets the job done. Really? Humiliating somebody? That's what it takes. I get it. You're both purrs. Well, you could say that. <laughs> don't admit it, you idiot. But it's true. I don't want to hear that from you. Okay. If I came off as a little rude, I apologize. Chris is so deeply and turns back to us. Her composure has already returned. I was only acting that way because you molested me, but I'll ignore that for now. 
I wish she would stop saying for now. It's like she's going to call the cops on me later. Well, to be fair, dude, you were lifting up her shirt yesterday and now you're harassing her with bananas and pervy talk. I mean, come on. Uh, please tell me what happened to the banana. I'd also like to hear about that. Kurisu glances at the phone wave. Name subject to change. That microwave thing. That's top secret. The one thing I'm clear to share with unauthorized individuals is that its name is the phone wave subject to change. <laughs> name subject to change. What's that about? Phone wave is weak. It needs a better name. You know, something fiery and damning and all that. I couldn't care less about its name. I'm afraid that's the only information you're cleared for, so you're just gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> Hold on, Okarin. Makisashi might be able to explain what's going on. Hmm, well, she is a genius. She would have to be- have to, eh, she would have to be to defeat my sharp wit. We can trust her intellect, at least. I wouldn't call it sharp wit so much as unending nonsense. But it's hard to stomach her attitude. Plus, she has the danger written on her face. Not to mention, she's a little scary, too. Then I get a great idea! That creepy grin. Are you thinking prophetic thoughts again? In his own way. <laughs> you said your name's Christina, right? What? Who the hell's Christina? I never said that. Christina sounds like the name of a Hollywood film star. It's definitely has, uh, it definitely has more flavor than her real name. We're gonna call you Christina now. If you wish to learn the secrets of this microwave, then you must meet my conditions. Which are... Condition 1. You must become a lab member. Ramen. What? No, lab mem, stupid! <laughs> Short for laboratory member. Uh, you mean you want me to join your research team? I'm supposed to return to America in August. I'll have you sign a non-disclosure agreement so you won't betray our secrets. Fake the agreement and I'll report your steamy perverted acts to Science Magazine. Gift! What? But that's just rumors, man. <laughs> You're a monster, Okrim. I'll take five copies. You're not a monster, Daru, but you are shameless. And I can respect that. <laughs> From the moment you become a lab man to the moment of your departure, your brain shall be used for the benefit of our lab. You're so full of it. Let's see the contract then. What contract? This is a lab, not a corporation. I don't mind lending you my knowledge, but if there is more pervy nonsense involved, the answer is no. That, that's reasonable. Don't worry, we don't bite. We just, you know, have locker room talk. No more molestation. No, alright. <laughs> he said that was the one that uh, condition one. So there's got to be a second one, right? It better not be. The second condition is that you overlooked all packs of uh, past acts of molestation I may or may not have committed. Yeah. New tips, that's why we love you. Oh grin, you're so petty. Uh you're the pettiest person I've ever met. That's why we love you. That's why we admire you. <laughs> Shut up, Daru. You have no right to talk. By the way, Daru's perverted acts aren't included. You two can work it out yourselves. Just me. Just my trespasses. What the hell, man? Dude, you, you're going to keep up the perviness. I'll try to keep it at a minimum. <laughs> uh, those who those are the conditions. If you can't accept them, then you must leave at once. Hehehe. <laughs> so, what will it be? I don't think it's a bad deal at all. Sounds reasonable. Yeah, I mean, for you. Carissa puts her fingers in her, uh, to her brow and shakes her head in an exaggerated gesture. Jeez, I feel like my hy I'm hyper-secreting noradrenaline, noradrenaline, whatever. Let me pick my jaw up off the floor. I don't care about your dislocated jaw. Do you accept the conditions or not? Answer me, Christina. Stop adding Tina. My name is Carissa. Carissa looks up at the ceiling and calms herself. It doesn't even sound like Christina, does it? Uh, does everyone in America make such exaggerated gestures? Sooner or later, she'll say, Damn! Or, oh my god! Or, motherfucker! <laughs> okay, I accept. Hey, 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 good answer. From this moment forth, you are lab mem number 004. Welcome, Christina, codename the zombie. I won't answer to either. Use my real name, Huon. 
Can we? We spend a minute staring each other down. Kurisu is the first to look away. She does so in a way that says good grief. You're such a child. You say something, genius perv girl? <laughs> Come on, no more saying perv. I won't treat you like a perv either, so let's drop it already. As long as you understand. Now, for the issue at hand. Doru, give Christina. No Tina either. All right, give Kurisu-kun an explanation of on our experiment so far. But I refuse. I swear to God, Barnaby. <laughs> In the end, I'm the one who has to explain. Along the way, I also relate the tale of my heroic deeds, which enrages Kurisu, of course. But I finally tell her everything about the bananas and the phone wave names of each change. Kurisu doesn't ask any questions. She's quick to understand, as expected of a genius. Finally, someone who can keep up with my intellects. Fascinating. Let's hear your opinion then. I think we can at least throw out complete. Eh. We can at least throw out completely worthless theories like electromagnetic weaponry and teleportation. The lady doth protest too much. So, what's your theory then? Can can we run the experiment one more time? I want to see it for myself. Uh, yeah, I think we saw some more bananas. Without waiting for approval, Kurisu plucks an untouched banana and sticks it in the microwave, then starts entering the commands on her phone. It's strange. She's still wearing her usual frown, but I can't shake the feeling that she's really enjoying herself. I can't put my finger on why. Call it a hunch. Maybe it has to do with an important scientific discovery taking place right in this moment. <laughs> but I mean, she is a scientist. Why shouldn't she enjoy experimenting? Exactly. Okabe-san, Hashida-san, please watch the bananas. Who are you going- Who are you to give me orders? I am the mad scientist who- Whatever, just keep your eye on the bananas. Okay, so she's a little snippy. I can deal with this. Dara and I do as we're told and stare up the bananas. Truth be told, we were planning to watch the bananas anyway. After missing it the first time, we were determined to witness the tra what transpired with our own eyes. 60 seconds have passed. Any change? Nope. Any second now, the gelified banana should reappear on the stem. If it only happens once, we could just call it an accident and be done with it. But if it happens twice, then let's prove that something's actually going on. And then, Carissa will have to admit that I, the great Huowen Kiyoma, have invented humanity's first teleporter. I keep staring at the bananas in anticipation. Whatever you've created, I think you can be proud of it, man. 100 seconds. A few moments after Carissa's report... Blink? Blink? Stop blinking! Damn it! Uh... It happened. A Joe Banna suddenly appeared without a sound. Now, there are two of them on the bunch. It happens faster than the blink of an eye. It appeared. I'm at a loss for words. I just witnessed the unthinkable. This phenomenon is clearly teleportation. The microwave timer chimes. And? Carisu peeks into the microwave, stumped. Uh, how's it look? Huh? Oh, uh... At, uh, at 104 seconds it did disappear abruptly. Yeah. She's quite flustered. I don't think many people could remain calm after witnessing such a phenomenon. So it is a teleporter! The first in human history! Well, Kurisu quickly calms down. She furrows her brow and crosses her arms, tapping her right foot as she mutters to herself. Teleportation. It's not even possible. Even if... Yeah, but here's the thing. Like, I can understand, you know, since it's going from one place to another, how... It could seem like teleportation, but the fact that it completely mints itself back with the original banana... Should say that it's not, right? It did move, no matter how unbelievable that may be. Could it be quantum teleportation? No, that only occurs on the quantum level. Don't avert your eyes from the truth. What you've seen with your own eyes is everything. She gives me a sharp look. Her eyes are like, like a sniper's, hard and keen. Did it really teleport? 
It's dangerous to reason from that conclusion. Well then, genius girl, what do you call this phenomenon? Indeed, Carissa, what do you? Ah, uh, let's sort this out. Neither the banana bunch nor the frozen chicken teleported, correct? So maybe there's a size limit for objects that can teleport. But aren't chicken pieces smaller than bananas? Well, we use the same chicken for each experiment. They come in 12 packs. Mayuri only buys her favorite, juicy chicken number one. Uh, that's quite a lot then. What about salt? You experimented with salt too, right? We used a handful of table salt on a plate for one experiment. Nothing happened. Maybe, maybe the plate was in the way. Of course, we tried it without the plate, but that didn't change anything. Then maybe each individual grain of salt was too small or something. That is questionable. I don't know what would be with salt. Hmm, I need a clue. Looks like our genius girl's fighting a hard battle. She starts pacing the room, looking a little annoyed. Anything else? Have you noticed anything else about the phone wave? Not phone wave. Phone wave name subject to change. Forget about that! So, have you noticed anything or not? Chris is looking at Daru. Looks like she's asking him, not me. Which makes sense. Daru seems to be the more capable of the two of us. Alright, but I guess we're going to have to find out if Daru's noticed anything different in the next episode because we are out of time for today. Alright, so! So far, we have... We're clearly on our path to time travel one way or another. This phone wave is definitely the key behind it all. It is the reason why we are able to, you know, hop from timeline to timeline. The reason this Kurisu is alive as we speak. But the question is, what does this experiment that we're currently conducting have to do with it? I have a feeling that it has to be time travel in its own right by reconnecting the banana and all that to its past form, but it doesn't make sense why it wouldn't do the same for the chicken. Because with the juicy chicken and all that stuff, it's pieces of a chicken, right? So logically, the pieces of the chicken would reform with the dead chicken, I assume? <laughs> or they would fuse together, something like that, right? But they just keep on freezing. And then, again, why are the bananas turning to jelly and all that? Like, that's, you know, a bit of a problem there. But I guess we'll have to figure... I'm sure they'll explain it. I'm sure they'll work it out in their own magnificent science brains on their own. And we'll just have to wait until then. So, yeah. Um, until next time, you know, like and subscribe if you guys want to. And thank you for watching. <laughs>